I came to this industry, uh, and I wasn't really from this industry, and it was striking to me that the entire industry was being run by white males. Uh, and, and I just felt that we were missing a tremendous opportunity uh, from a recruiting point of view, uh, from a messaging point of view, and we embarked on this diversity and inclusion program at, at, at our company, not just because it's the right thing to do, it's because of business dictates that. The danger of groupthink in boardrooms or other conference rooms uh, is a very dangerous phenomenon. I believe gender balance is really important to uh, foster diversity of thought. And when issues are brought up at a board table or at a leadership table, having the diverse perspectives come together and go at an idea in different ways often produces a better outcome than if, it is if the idea is just looked at from one lens. The more experiences that you can constructively synthesize into a conversation, the better outcomes you get. You need someone who will really engage in debate with you. You need to have, quote, creative abrasion. And creative, unquote, creative abrasion is about really a marketplace of ideas that you develop through debate and discourse. And that's what you need to have happen on a board. One thing that we do know is that you very rarely get innovation without both diversity and conflict. You actually need the conflict. So you have to figure out a way to create an environment in which that can happen. And one of the interesting things about that is there's a real tension between being supportive enough or having an environment that's supportive enough that people feel psychologically safe enough to speak up and take risks. Diversity and inclusion is a critical component of the DNA of our company. We're a marketing and communications company, and as a result, we have to represent and do work for our clients who are reaching out to the consumer. And the consumer is certainly a diverse group of people. Um, and we have to represent what the consumer looks like, what they think, and the cultural aspects of that. Women either are the main purchasers or influence the main purchases in consumer products. And therefore, having a, a woman's perspective represented, whether it's in the boardroom or in the C-suite or on all of the leadership table, tables, is an important idea. I think all of us feel that the pace at which we've seen diversity in sort of the top ranks, whether it's the top leadership of an organization or the boards of organizations, has been slower than all of us would like and, and would have anticipated. There's a lot more work to be done in terms of increasing those numbers. You, you have to make it uh, part of the business model. Uh, and to do so, you don't have to set quotas, but you do set business objectives. But more importantly, you show, you show that the business model has, has an impact. And, and those companies that don't have that type of uh, diversity and inclusion are not performing as well as, as those that do.